So um, a little bit about like what we're going to be going over today. First, Gabriel's going to give you guys a rundown of what a light node is in comparison to a full node. Uh, and then he's going to go over why you should run a light node. Uh, then I'm going to help you guys get a light node running. Uh, then Gabriel's going to talk a little bit about this thing called a role kit and Polaris integration. It's this roll-up sequencer we'll, we'll be running on top of a light node. Um, then we'll run it on top of the light node, and then we'll do like a life cycle of a uh, transaction demonstration for you guys on the whiteboard. All right, nice. Um, basically, we have some assumption. Um, by raise of hand, who knows about the data availability problem? Okay. <laughs> who knows what a roll up is? OK, <laughs> that's perfect. We're assuming that you know. We can move on. Um, quick reminder, the difference between a full node and a light node. A full node downloads and verifies all the blockchain data, which is the block header and the block data. It is a higher barrier to entry, and it's the minority of users. And the light node only downloads the block header and verifies that with some trust assumption. It doesn't verify the data and doesn't download it. Uh, it's a lower barrier to entry, and it's the majority of users. OK. <laughs> so why should I run a light node? Um, in the beginning, we had Bitcoin, right? You can run your own node. You can participate in the network. Um, it's pretty bad UX because it's a big overhead to actually interact with the network. It's not really accessible to like the very end user. Um, time passed. Ethereum came along, and then we got much more accessible wallets. Uh, we had MetaMask. You can just connect to your RPC out of the box. It's much more accessible. In comparison to running your node, this is amazing UX because you just need to download an extension. And, but it's a terrible, terrible habit, in my opinion, because now you are trusting the RPC. Like, why are we part of the network if everything that we are getting is just a JSON? And what we want is full node security, but with minimal overhead and not having to trust the RPC provider. And that's basically what a light node provides. And the challenge is here to have a wallet-like experience while still running a node. And that's what we're still working on. OK, can I put this back in here? Is it going to hold? OK. Can you guys hear me? OK, cool. So let's run one. Um, who's following along here? OK. <laughs> OK, you're actually following along. OK, cool. So do you, have the, do you guys have the repository? Can I move on to the next slide, if you have? OK, cool. Oh, uh, there's no more slides. I'm going to go through the actual tutorial now. OK, so um, increase the font here. Yeah, OK. So I'm just going to copy some commands. I made it really easy for you guys to clone the Celestia node repository. OK, I got kicked out of, oh, hold on, guys. Sorry, I need to tether again. One second. The Wi-Fi is really bad. Yeah, over my hotspot. It's going to be great. Actually, I'm, I'm running it from a server, so it doesn't really matter. Um, let me connect real quick. We're live. Yeah, one sec. All right, guys, you're going to see me SSH into my, into my server here. Uh, does anybody need the font to be bigger? Yeah? OK. It's going to suck when you guys see logs, though, because they're going to be wrapped, but whatever. Um, Horizontal? Yeah. Horizontal mode? OK. Yeah, all right, fine. Better? OK, cool. So I'm just going to copy and paste the command to um, check out, download the Celestia node repository, check out uh, this branch that I had to make. Um, then we're going to build it and install it. Um, and then we're going to initialize the node. Um, this is kind of an annoying step. Um, not the initializing node part, but the next part, which is funding your account. Uh, because you're going to have to use Discord, sadly. Yeah, gross. 
Okay. So the like the command itself is there, uh, but it's just Celestial Light in it, and then dash dash p2p dot network Arabica. We're running this against a live network. We're gonna let the node sync for a little bit because Arabica has been running now for like oh two weeks. Um, so it's gonna take like a minute to two minutes to sync the network. Um, nice. My own command isn't working because something's not working. Cool. Okay, it spits out an address. You're gonna take that address and you're gonna go to the Discord. It's called, it's linked there. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, I need to unplug because I need to do one pass right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I knew this would happen. Yeah. Sorry. I'm going to need to do 2FA as well on top of everything. I can love passwords and security. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 true. Clear it? OK, yeah, true. <laughs> Last time I pasted my password into the, into the Discord, so. Let's see if I do it again this time. OK, so you just do, oh yeah, shit. Whoops. Just do dollar sign request and then paste your, um, paste your account address into the, um, into the message. It's in Arabica faucet, but it's linked. Um, can everybody hear me? Am I talking OK? OK, is everybody listening to me? Yeah. Right. Okay. Nice. Cool. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at that. Uh, OK, so we funded our account. And now we're going to run a, um, a light node. So the where did my thing go? Oh, it's here. OK, now we're going to run it and let it sync. Um, we're running it with a gRPC connection to the core network. Uh, and I'll explain what that means soon. But your light node should be syncing, minus syncing. Uh, right now, it's going to take something like one to two minutes. Is everybody syncing? Is somebody syncing their light node at the moment? You're always syncing. Yeah, you're always syncing. You're syncing? No? It's syncing. Uh, the Wi-Fi is? OK, sorry, guys. OK, I'm, I, I have to move on. But uh, what, the, what the light node is doing now is it's syncing the header chain. And it's also sampling from the genesis height up until the network head. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit also about what the purpose of a DA node is, because we have two different networks in Celestia at the moment. One is the core network um, and the DA network that wraps the core network. So the purpose of a DA node is, is twofold. You have um, the responsibility to verify the availability of block data, and then you can also verify the inclusion or non-inclusion of certain blob data um, by namespace. So blobs are just like arbitrary payloads that you can publish to Celestia DA under some like arbitrary namespace. Uh, and you'll go into that a little bit in a second. Um, but yeah, that's the purpose of a light node. And all of the syncing functionality is there to obviously support those functions. Um, I think I'm synced. Nice. Can you talk about DN nodes? DN nodes? Shut up. <laughs> uh, OK, we'll get. Uh, quick intro. So now that we have a, a light node running, we're going to put something on top of it. Um, it's called Rollkit. It's an op open modular framework to build sovereign rollups. You can imagine Rollkit as being um, the glue that connects multiple interfaces together. So uh, at the bottom of the stack, you'll have the DA layer. Um, then at the top, you can pick your execution environment. Soon, we will be able to integrate with any shared sequencer and then pick your proof system. So for this configuration, we're going to have Celestia as the A layer, Cosmos SDK with Polaris as the execution environment. We have a centralized sequencer. We have only one, one, on, only one node running. And it's going to be in pessimistic mode, which means you're going to have to, what's the difference between pessimistic and optimistic? Optimistic is you run an execution light client. And in pessimistic mode, you need to run a full, client, uh, full node to have full security, uh, basically executing all the transactions to follow the chain. Um, very brief intro into Polaris. Uh, it's a good EVM. Um, there's a great modular summit talk. Uh, the guys with the bear masks, those are the people who build it. Um, probably saw them on Twitter. Uh, they have some fun things like 
pre-compiled and great opcodes, and it's built in a modular way that you can put it on something like the Cosmos SDK, uh, which we are using to interact with RollKit through the ABCI interface. Okay, is this good again? All right. Okay, so um, now we're gonna clone Polaris. Here. Is, did, did people get their light node synced, by the way? Anybody is syncing a light node? Rip, okay. Damn, it would have been really cool had like other people been syncing their light notes at the same time. Okay, anyway, we cloned Polaris. Um, I'm gonna actually switch the order of these windows. Uh, okay, we've cloned it. Now um, you need to replace the entry point script with something that I wrote um, just to make the thing work. So I've provided a command for you guys to do that there. Curl it. You're gonna have to probably chmod it. Just run it. <laughs> Just run it, run it from my brain. Okay, make it executable. Now um, you're gonna run foundry up and mage start. Nice, gonna need to source. I still don't understand why that is happening. Okay, foundry. Okay, so this is about to launch. Um, the roll kit roll up is, is going to be running against the Celestia light node that we already have synced here. Um, and we'll, we'll also explain kind of what's happening in the background because it's very difficult to decipher from logs what the story is. Um, but we'll go through that like by doing a diagram on the board here and then kind of pointing back to the logs whenever there's something of note. Um, so you can explain a little bit what's going on here. Yeah. No. So you do not need funds to run a light client because the, the basic functionality of a light node is to do data availability sampling, which doesn't cost anything, <laughs> except for hardware accounts. Huh? Okay, so the reason why, actually this, this is a good question and a good clarifying question. He asked uh, why we have to fund um, the wallet and the reason why is because we're running a roll up against the light node and we're going to be submitting transactions via the light node. So that light node has to have a funded account to be able to do so because it costs money to post messages on the DA layer. Okay, that's a good clarifying question, thank you. Okay, so we have our roll kit network running. Um, I'm gonna just be drawing a bunch of diagrams and you can follow along. If you have any clarifying questions in the meantime, just raise your hand and then we can make this a conversation. Um, so, what we're currently doing is we have a P2P block sync where this is our node right now and it's running a roll kit full node, roll up full node, right? And underneath we are running a Celestia Lite node for data availability. And this roll kit full node is a sequencer. So it's not only a full node, but it's actually sequencing and posting those roll up blocks. Um, and before that, it is gossiping those blocks in the rollup P2P layer. So our rollup layer actually has a P2P layer, so you can run your own rollup full node and actually sync to it. Um, now that, let's say we have an end user, right? And I said we have a pessimistic mode, which means that we are actually a full node. We can connect to uh, the network sync up to it, and we can post transactions. And those transactions go through the mempool, and the aggregator will pick them up and create a block, right? A, bl a block is a roll-up header and a bunch of transactions. Right, this is the roll-up data. And now through um, a PFB transaction, it's a pay for blob transaction, we can pay for posting our roller block to the data availability layer. So we're gonna submit a transaction through our Celestialite node and post those bytes 
to uh, the mempool of the Celestia network uh, through gRPC, through the core network. So the core network is a Tendermint chain. Um, Tendermint consensus with validators running, right? Um, in this network, they will get a bunch of transactions, a bunch of bytes, and they will agree on those bytes. This is basically the consensus uh, engine, and it creates something that we're going to talk a lot about, the square, right? I love the square. Um, they agree on a square, and the square is a 2D Solomon encoded square. So let's see how this, uh, those bytes will look inside the square. So we're going to have our square. And inside the square, we're going to have shares. So, let me use a different color. Is everybody from this side seeing what I'm drawing here? All right. Um, we basically constructed a square. And those bytes will be laid out in this square. And our transaction there is going to be part of those bytes somewhere inside the square. Um, why do we use a square? We erasure code the square um, in both directions. So we're going to erasure code it into this direction and into this direction. Um, Quick disclaimer, what is erasure coding, right? Imagine if you have two points and you make a line. Maybe go through the points. And we're going to create two more points. Now, with any of those two points, I can create the line and I can actually get the other two points. So the same goes with a row or a column, right? Imagine if I have one row, and any four shares of this row, I can reconstruct the whole row. We want this block reconstruction so the clients that will sample can reconstruct this block afterwards. All right, so we have the block with a lot of roll-up data. We erasure coded it, and we agreed on it. What we're agreeing on it is the data availability route. It's basically all right. Um, we have a namespace Merkle tree. Uh, it's a binary Merkle tree, sparse Merkle tree, and it is indexed. You can imagine that we are posting. Uh, those roll cut blobs in a specific namespace. Let's say it's namespace a million. Then we're always going to uh, submit those blobs into this namespace, and we only have to download this particular namespace. So we don't care, and then we won't need to be able to look into the whole block. And each row will create a row root, and each column will create a column root. So we're going to have, in this case, eight row roots and eight column roots. This will be the extended header that we are creating and gossiping to the network. So after the core network, um, participants are also inside the DA network. OK. So, should I take the red? Okay, you can take this. Can you hear me? Okay, cool. Uh, so, you 
you've just talked about what happens when the core network already produces a block, right? And then that block ends up in the DA layer. So what happens is, and I'm going to talk about this from the context of a Celestial Light node because it's what we care about right now. Uh, what ends up happening is that the Celestial Light node will receive a header that corresponds to this block uh, containing some information uh, besides just like the raw tenement header, uh, specifically about the row roots and the column roots. Can people see or am I blocking the whole thing? Okay, cool. Um, and the Celestial Light node will perform data availability sampling over that block, the corresponding block. Um, and it, the rollup full node will also do something called the blobs by namespace request um, that the Celestial Light node will take care of on the P2P layer. So in the DA network, it's not just light nodes. There's also full nodes that are responsible for syncing the entirety of a block uh, and making that data available for the light nodes to both sample and request uh, specific kinds of like blobs from. And so the light node will make a blobs by namespace request to the network and a full node somewhere over here, some random one that has the data, will traverse the NMT, the, the one corresponding to the rollups namespace, and it will collect those blobs, including the proofs. I'm not drawing very well. <laughs> and then uh, send it back to the Celestial Light node, and it will hand it back to the rollup full node for verification. Okay. Yeah, clarifying. Is Celestia what? An instrument? You can put music on top of it and then play it. Um, so now we have our Celestia Light Node. And we talked about sampling, right? Why do we sample? We basically want to make sure that the data is available. Um, if, in our case, specific for Celestia, you want to have uh, height fraud, right? I am running this node. We have no idea what I'm doing. I'm actually malicious, and I have um, crazy code, and I'm just minting whatever. Um, this, for me to be able to hide the data, um, the validators have to collude and do like something like called the data withholding attack. So because we have block reconstruction, they will have to um, hide k plus 1 times k plus 1 data, basically the entirety of this. And now each time I sample, I have a chance to actually hit this, because my random samples are just randomly picking a point in the square to sample. Each time I sample, I get a share with the proof to the data root. Um, to my extended header that I have to the row roots or the column roots. Um, I have a three quarter chance to miss it. And I will sample 16 times, which means that I will have a probability of, I don't know, 1%, uh, I'm not sure, maybe lower, um, of missing and making uh, actually never hitting the blob that the people are trying to hide. So with only 16 samples for an eight megabyte blocks, I'm actually just downloading 0.02% um, of the data to have a guarantee of 99% that the whole block is available. So if such a withholding attack uh, happens, the full node can request the light nodes and all the light nodes you're running right now to get the samples, and they'll be just random samples, but because of the 2D uh, erasure coding, the full node will be able to reconstruct the block and then actually see and validate it um, and see if fraud happens. And if fraud happens, we're gonna generate a fraud proof and propagate it. So now we have a full node, right? Uh, a roll-up full node running and in the next step, we would like to not to run a roll-up uh, full node, but a roll-up light node, right? Um, so let's say there's a new participant joining, and it's just a light node. A light node is now running our roll-up light node and a Celestia light node, which means that I'm only getting the roll-up header and not the transaction. So how do I know that the... Um, the header is correct, right? Either through an optimistic or a ZK case, right? For a ZK proof, I'm gonna, some prover will generate the proof and a, we will be able to validate the state root that is in the header. 
For an optimistic case, um, we will optimistically assume that it is correct until we get a fraud proof. So this is why we actually need the data to be available for us as a user to have a guarantee that our honest full node that, in our, that is running somewhere has a way of creating this fraud proof. So now our, I'm malicious, right? I'm running some bad sequencer and I'm actually just minted myself a billion coins and in some user transaction. So, and this is the transaction here, which is very bad. And I also posted my state root, right? Um, and now the full node, because Celestia will take care of it, that it is available, um, can now check what I actually posted to the data availability layer and see that I'm, that I'm malicious. So it will give the light node a proof, a Merkle proof to those transactions and actually, hey, th those are the transactions and the roll-up light node will get a uh, minimal state and this transaction and the proposed state root, right? Uh, and only with that, we have a minimal execution client which will load up the state, run the transaction on top of it, and see that this state root is false. And with that, we will know that I was actually malicious and this is a fraudulent block. All right, um, what, what are we on time? Uh, we have 10 or 15 minutes left. But what we can also do is talk, okay, so um, the demo's kind of done. The demo gods shine down upon me today. Um, yeah, so what happened was, if you can see here, I've highlighted that there are a bunch of blocks that are marked as hard confirmed. So back when we discussed how a blob travels through the network, basically what happened is that roll-up full node over there uh, was able to retrieve its blobs by namespace from the DA layer. So it traveled all the way through the consensus network into the DA network and back to the roll-up full node. So it was successful and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> and this is happening on a, on a live test network. Yay. Huh? Okay, so uh, do people, first I wanna see how many people have questions and then we can, like if they, there are not many questions, we can go on to try and deploy a contract and interact with it. Do people have questions so far? Is it an actual question? Well, <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> okay, there's, there's a, <laughs> thank you. Um, anybody has an actual question pertaining? Yes, Tina. So are you, uh, are you talking specifically about like, for example, I'm a roll-up and I want to listen to a specific namespace? So like I'm a roll-up and I only care about a certain namespace. Do you want to talk about that? So what you have to make sure is that you, well, we're kind of disagreeing on that, but um, we have, I, I think we have to make sure that the whole Celestia block is uh, available. So you cannot only sample your thing that you want to have available because there could be a case where, let's say, the Celestia block itself is fraudulent. Like, we have a two-thirds attack of the validators colluding, and our light node will need to catch that this block is actually fraudulent. So we need to make sure that the whole block is available. Other questions? Yeah. So, um do the roll-up light nodes get the um, roll-up headers from the DA layer, or are those just gossiped inside of the DA, uh, inside of the roll-up P2P overlay? Good question. Um, I don't have to repeat it. It was into the mic. Um, we we do both. We have a P2P header sync that light nodes will be able to sync through the P2P network, but uh, they will also we have to also post those headers to the DA layer 
for us to detect double signing, for example. And we will be able to retrieve um, inclusion proofs that those headers are actually there without actually downloading it. Um, or I can be a light node that looks into the namespace with the headers and checks it. So a light node could, for example, also generate fraud proofs. So does that mean in those cases that a light node, because I'm assuming the block header and the transaction data are in the same namespace, so in those cases, the rollup light node will also download the transaction, the whole block? We actually, like currently, we only support pessimistic mode, um, but we are, uh, we will be splitting the namespaces of headers and blocks, so you can download them separately. Good question. Do you want to deploy a contract? Any other? I already did. Um, oh. <laughs> thanks, Phil. Uh, OK, so my connection broke, uh, and I don't want to pull up the logs again. So uh, if you want to follow along, it, this is at the bottom of the uh, tutorial from like the repo that I posted before. Uh, and you're welcome to do this by yourself. Um, and I didn't think that we would have enough time to do this now, so that's why I didn't have commands fully ready. Um, but what we just did is we deployed uh, a contract to the Polaris Rollkit uh, rollup sequencer that's running on top of the light node. Um, yes, and now we are going to interact with it. But the problem is, is that, uh, huh? It broke the connection and I don't wanna, should I spin up the logs again? I have to kill the instance. Nobody has any other question. <laughs> Okay, I'll do that now, since we have time anyway. Uh, who has questions? Yeah. Um, so uh, it might be helpful to understand, like, um, why do we uh, extend the data in two directions and not only one? So what we are, interesting, good question. Um, Let's say we only extend the data into one direction. Um, we have our data, and we extend it to four more shares. When you are sampling here, you will have a 50% chance of hitting the data. Um, but you will, so you increase the chance of sampling. It is actually better for sampling to do this. You, do, you have to do less sampling. Um, the problem here is if you want to do a, uh, a fraud proof that it was actually not correctly sampled, a bad encoding fraud proof, then you have to give them the whole data, right? Let's say, uh, let's say this data is malicious. If this data is malicious, I need to give you the whole data to be able for you to prove that this is actually badly encoded. Um, in the case of a square, I only need to give you one row, right? So imagine those are 16 shares a row. So in, in this scenario, we are reducing the fraud proof size of uh, n to square root of n. And which is very nice and much, much lighter for the light nodes. Yeah, um, does it make sense? up with the with this like uh, contract interaction um, no questions okay so I've already deployed the contract on top of the instance of Polaris that's running um, and the tutorial is here it's linked at the bottom of the repo again um, now we're going to try and interact with the contract so I hope that this works because I've kind of done this all shoddy okay cool it looks like it worked uh, yeah do you want to talk do you have anything to say about it what do you want to say? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. 
Cool. It's a blockchain. <laughs> you should actually deploy the Renee Simp down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've done it now. So, yeah. Cool. Yay. Okay, you can finish early. Thanks.